All right. Well, I think that's it. I'm ready to jump right in. We need some updates. We have Roxanne and Robin to give us a our weekly update or biweekly update. And uh, let's let's just jump right in and see what's been going on. Roxanne, Robin, how are you guys doing? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? Evening, guys. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks for having us on. Our absolute pleasure. <laughs> Great to yeah, have you. Think, hey, things guys. are going really well. It, there's been a lot of preparation the last couple of weeks. Do you, do you want me to give you a bit of an update? What's going on? Absolutely. Okay, so you may know we've booked a venue down in, in the Midlands in the UK. It's called the Pioneer Centre, and I was there today. I was there doing another recce and just checking out the PA kit and just talking to the team and figuring out where people are going to go and how we're going to organise ourselves. But this venue is pretty special. It's, it's purpose-built for conference. Uh, so it's got a 300-seater auditorium. And then down in the other annex, there's another 200-seater auditorium. So I plan on, on the Saturday doing a double up. So we'll have our main speakers doing a morning, a mid-morning, an afternoon, and an early evening. Um, but on, on the Saturday morning and sort of late morning, we'll double up. Um, so I really, really want to encourage those that are sort of brand new to Flat Earth to come and learn. So session one, day one, will be a, a Flat Earth 101 in the second auditorium. And the, the next session will be held by Jason, who's agreed to do an um, activist workshop, which would be brilliant because just to put this into context, the previous two weeks will have been the UK leg of his amazing pan-European tour. So we'll have got through a few cities, uh, f finishing at Birmingham just the day before, or sorry, on the day of the start of um, the conference. Um, the Friday night will be the Globe Live finale, um, and, and Roxanne and Adam will take that as a big review, much like we did before, and looking back on the previous two weeks and looking ahead to the rest of the tour, which would be amazing. I can't imagine how many people who um, have been tuning in, you know, digesting the live streams will really want to, those in the UK especially, just want to come and, you know, shake the hands of those that have done it, come along, get involved in Birmingham perhaps, and then come along to the, the Friday night event because we'll have an open mic, we'll do a, a flashback, you know, we'll do some reviews, and then we'll, I've just wrecked the, the perfect pub, which is about three miles away, and I'm, I'm looking to put on minibuses to take people from the venue to this amazing pub. You know, it's, it's, it's old school, it's Tudor, it's a, a Weatherspoons, and that means a lot to the UK people. Weatherspoons is a franchise that offers really low price of beer. So, um, Robin, Adam will be able to ferry everyone back and forth in his in his Cadillac. That'll be all right. <laughs> yes, yeah, stretch limo for everyone. Uh, I only do that for select flat earthers. <laughs> so I, I intend to put on a couple of coaches, you know, with 48 seaters, a couple of um, back to back, you know, shuttle runs to the pub from the centre. And then, uh, you know, we'll have some taxi shuttle runs back to the venue. I've just been sort of sussing out how long that takes. You know, what's the venue like for an after, you know, after a presentation event? Can we all get down there? Is there enough space for a couple of hundred people? The answer is very much yes. It's it's a very long, deep pub that gives back with a nice restaurant. It's got outside seating for at least 50, 60 people as well. So by the time we all rock up there, it's going to be such a lovely atmosphere because we'll spill out into the outdoors. There's lovely seating out the back. So I'm looking forward to publicizing that event as well because we'll do one on the Friday and on the Saturday. We'll do shuttle runs with coaches so people don't feel they've got to hop in a car and worry about their drink driving and all that sort of stuff. We, we can get people there and back. And... Um, just chuffed to bits with the venue, really, because the price point is so cheap. You know, for 195 quid, we're able to sleep, feed, and get the whole conference done. Friday night, Saturday, and well, Sunday. Robin, whilst we're on, whilst we're on that, I know you've done loads of um, mm. some bobs on price point. So maybe take a minute um, and actually just go through it in some detail, because there's some. There's, there's yeah. some detail that we, you guys have made an effort to try and 
help people because mm. as we're all growing on this last year's was was driven by learning um mm. and you know it was done in a certain place you've found a different venue which really does make this a lot more affordable for people and i think more so a bit like what Didi was saying um affordable with getting together with your friends um, yeah i mean the my reason why for doing this is i'm i, I love I love networking and I love, I love bringing people together. So I actually make a living out of doing that. Um, so I've done loads of events in the past. I used to be a head chef. I used to be a restaurant manager. I used to be a bar manager. I used to bring people to events at property investment events and filled venues with prospective investors. So this is my bag, you know, I really, I really enjoy it. And for me, when I look back at the April event of last year, the main takeaways, apart from obviously seeing debates and some great speakers, was the community aspect of bringing people together. And what you don't, what you don't value until you've looked back two, three, four months later, is the fact you made some great friends. So I look back and I think, well, I met Charlotte there, and Charlotte just encouraged me to to start a meetup in Bristol. And if it wasn't for Charlotte, I wouldn't be doing meetups in Bristol. And if I wasn't doing meetups in Bristol, I wouldn't be thinking, I need to do some activism. And if it wasn't for seeing Ruben there as well and getting some confidence watching Ruben and then connecting with Roxanne, I wouldn't have done some, some activism. Shout out Ruben, legend. Yeah, massively. And I think I met you there, Adam, just briefly. I think you were walking around with the camera as well. And... Um, you know, the people I really connected with that day and, and those days was was definitely Ruben and definitely Charlotte because Ruben was there on his store and you got a chance to speak to uh, him and Cynthia and you, you just get to know that person. You realise, crumbs, I'm not on my own. Um, he's not mad, I'm not mad. <laughs> we're, actually, we're actually all right people, you know. We can get this thing done together. So for me, um, this conference is about building community. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm all about getting people together and keeping them together. And the one thing about going into a city centre is you you pretty much have to disperse in the evening. Now, some of you might have a booking in, in the hotel itself, which means you don't have to go far. You can go into the bar and that's all good. But if you haven't got a hotel booking there, you have to move away. And, you know, you're also parking your car in city centres, which is... 10, 15, 20 quid a night. So let's go through the price points of how this Bob thing was about 50 odd. I think it was 65 quid, I think. Yeah. Weekend then, when, when, you, when you price it up, uh, cost of uh, a couple staying in a hotel and doing the conference and parking and eating out in the evening and drinks comes to about 500 quid, I think. Um, so, so moving to the, U, the UK convention offers all the food, all the accommodation, not the alcohol, but um, soft drinks, and all of the conference for £195. Now, if if staying in a conference facility is not your thing, and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dress it up here, it's not five star hotel, boutique hotel. It's more how shall I put it? It's more sort of truck stop community community residential so you've got very you've got very clean and basic accommodation and it's predominantly set up for churches and youth groups so they know they've got heavy wear and tear there but but what you have got is everything is there you know you've got foosball snooker pool sorry pool and table tennis and a basketball court outside a big football pitch you know, you've got all of that on site for the kids and, and, and us as well if we want to go and have a game of football. Um, Robin, but... last year, mate, I um, I stayed in a lovely room. It was gorgeous. And I, I've got to say, mm. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the fact that I paid a lot of money for a place I did spent no time well, other than where I had my eyes shut. So, you know, well, I think that's that... a really good shout, what you're doing. There really isn't a need for anything other than a mattress that's not got fleas in it 
clean sheets. <laughs> no, it's very yeah. clean. I've, I've been to see it today. But what, what's really great is you can actually opt to go book something local and, and, lo and, and just book a day ticket for 55 quid. So if it's your thing and you want to go stay in some, somewhere really flashy and really nice, there's nothing stopping you doing that. So f you could book a Saturday for 55 quid, a Sunday for 55 quid, and for that price point, you'll get um, the breakfast, lunch, and dinner on the Saturday, and the breakfast and lunch on the Sunday. Um, and what you're going to get is a packed out day of presentations, but then you can go off to your own accommodation. Now, for those that want to have a, a few beers on the Saturday night, it might it might might be a nice thing to do to go and stay in the in the George Hotel in Bewley, which is where I want to have the, the evening event because that way you can get the coach down, have a few beers and stay in Bewley. And you can have a great time, have a breakfast there and come back in or get breakfast, come, come back into the venue, have your breakfast okay. there. So for those that want a really nice boutique hotel or a, a nice, you know, really nice accommodation, there's plenty around. I check the rooms, the room price for the Bewley Hotel, the, the George Hotel in Bewley, and it's about 60 quid a night. It's amazing. So, um, and then the, the best hotel in the area is about 140, 150 quid a night. And it's really, really nice. So for those who want to do it that way, there's nothing stopping you. You still get all the benefits of the conference You can go out and have a beer with everyone. And then you just crash out somewhere else, somewhere a bit, a bit nicer. So the, the, there are discounts offered for children and discounts offered for groups. So if you've got children, all children below four go free. Everyone, all children between four and 11 are half price and children between 11 and 16 as 25% uh, off. And that's pretty good. And then if you, if you book as a, as a couple, there's a discount. And if you book as a four, there's also a discount. And then, and then beyond that, if you, if you trust me enough to, do a direct debit into our conference bank account there's even a, a discount for that by by circumventing eventbrite who take about four or five percent so and you'll see and you'll see that when you click through onto eventbrite they actually show you the fee um so where i'm saying it's 195 for um a single adult booking for the residential you you can avoid paying all of that and pay direct into the conference account which Charlotte and myself are joint signatories on, and you you get another five percent off. I think it's about one eight three, one eight four. Yeah. So, to, to to move it on from from the money a bit, there, mate. You've you've talked mm. about some of the um, ways in which your experience has has organised this event. The thing mm. I'm hearing, and I, like I said, I had a, I had a nice room last year, and it was it was pointless other than. Me and Anthony Riley sat on opposite double beds, laying down mid-afternoon, chatting <laughs> shit. Um, Lavish. Watch, that was, watch, yeah, that was li literally. <laughs> but outside of that, I, I said earlier, really, you don't need much more than a bed. And, and genuinely, you don't. And outside of you providing really good, affordable beds for the night, what you're talking about this year seems to be a little bit of a seed change. It's not just so much of a, as a convention, conference, whatever that means. You're opening it up to families, and the the area itself is enough to, because we've all got kids, and they might pretend they're interested in flat earth for an hour or two, but <laughs> if there's plenty out there, as you're describing with sports facilities and bits for kids to do, it really does open it up as a a much bigger uh, audience to attend, and not necessarily mm. attend as we did last year. Um, but join the kind of flat earth village that it sounds like you're more building mm. for a weekend. And with that yeah. in mind, I just wanted to say, sod the posh places, mate. If that's what you're building. Yeah. I would want to be on site because that sounds. I'm there with you on that one. I'm going to be there on site with my kids. This... The... I'm going to put like a bit of a retreat and a get together and productive event all in mm. one. If that makes sense. I think I think what when you look back at any convention, you think I met this person here, I met that person there, I really enjoyed that presentation, 
but the value that persists okay yeah i i appreciate i learned some good things too but the value persists is the relationships and if i can make a space for people to break out in between you know sessions and give plen plenty of time after that you know it's all wound up and finished no one's going anywhere unless they choose to um you get a chance to break out and there's free tea and coffee all the time or water you know you have free tea i appreciate coffee. that i appreciate that robin that's fine is there a bar on site uh, yeah i knew you'd ask that that's the one snag about this place you can't drink on site so that's why i'm going to put on a, a minibus to take us out yeah put the flag in in the, in the car um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got a little uh, little siphon in the car. <laughs> it flasks. Um, it yeah. flasks. There's nothing stopping you putting something in the boot of your car and leaving it outside. There's absolutely nothing stopping you to do that. Just, I often just... transport a lot of alcohol in my boot, <laughs> mate, so it's fine. But um, uh, the main thing is, you know, we'll have a social. We'll have a social Friday night, first social on Saturday. I'll organise some uh, some mini buses or, or coaches, and we'll we'll all get down there with a shuttle run that will come back every half an hour. So the, the main thing for me here is building community. And I said to Roxanne, right, you know, when we started talking about all of this sort of stuff, this is for me, it's about legacy and building community. I mean, on the legacy side, I don't want my kids to turn around when it all comes out about Flow Earth being, you know, big lie. I don't want them saying, you knew about this and what did you do? I want, I want them to say, fair play, you stuck your neck out and did what you could do. Um, but more so than that, it's, um, you know, it's about building community. And I think that's what a conference will do for sure. If you make the right environment for it, you know, if you have breakout areas, plenty of gaps between the presentations and leave it optional for the evening. You know, no one has to go down to the, the pub later on. Of course, most of us will want to, but you don't have to. If if you're if you're a family with small ones, I mean, Dan and Kelly are coming from Bristol. They got four, three little ones under four, but they're all coming. That's it. Did yeah, you, have you learned? Have you learned from the last I'm conference my that kids, my kids as well? I'm bringing both of my children. They're going to be there for the entire weekend as well. So I'd encourage anyone who's got kids to bring them along. My, you know, I don't think it's. I think what. We, I think what we're going to do is we're going to be able to come out the other side of this weekend and we're going to say, actually, that was not what I thought that was going to be. That's what everyone's going to leave this knowing. Mm. That was not what I thought that was going to be. I, you know, in fact, you said exactly what I said to Robin in the get-go. I said, there's no way Jess and DJ are going to want to come and be around us all weekend. And, and then the way Robin was talking about structuring this weekend, I went, actually, no, actually, this is no different from me going glamping with the kids actually that all we're doing is securing that we don't have to have mundane conversations with said love it sign me up so for me, i think the, the the dynamic of this is completely different in the sense where this is going to be something that i can advocate for my kids to get involved in um so yeah i i'd, I'd strongly suggest anyone with children that wants to get away for the weekend and be around like-minded people and have a constructive weekend as well as a retreative weekend as well as a social weekend, it's almost like three din, you know, three birds with one grain. Mm. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to the, all the synergies of people coming out of um, a session and then spending half an hour breakout saying hello to folk, and then you know, and then the evening when you're waiting for the meal because the can the canteen is brilliant. It it'll seat about four oh, crumbs, four or five hundred. It's huge, and you know, it'll sleep, the place will sleep 320 and it'll take 500 delegates during the day. So even if I max out with my, you know, my selling of tickets and we get through to 320, let's, let's, let's hope we get that far. Um, I can still go on and sell another 180 tickets on the day, on the day ticket basis. And we're still good. You know, we could actually ram the place. And given that Gary did 200, Gary and Dee did 200, um, and we didn't, we didn't have anything like the confidence in conferences at that point, and we didn't have anything like the sort of YouTube exposure and Facebook exposure to, to, the, to these sort of events, notwithstanding, we've also had like an exponential growth in Flat Earth, Flat Earth Awakening. It, it stands to reason that we're going to get 
the same number plus. You know, I can't, I can't see any reason why not. Am I, each day I challenge myself, can I remove another hurdle that would stop someone coming here? And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make it as inclusive as possible and make everyone feel welcome. You know, even someone who's really tentative or, you know, flat curious or just started looking, I want them to feel a big hug. You know, the whole, the whole movement, the whole awakening, everyone there is just going to make them feel welcome. Mate, Gosh, I think Robin. you've done a grand, I, I think you've done a grand job that, and I think you've made a seed change in the people you're inviting. Um, mm. I think it's great. And I'm, I'm trying to get a mental change in my head. And, and the thing I've got is that instead of it being no alcohol, it's one of those new trendy restaurants where you bring your own bottle. Yeah, stick it in the car, mate, and just pop oh, out every five it. minutes. <laughs> uh, Robin, Roxanne, um, can I just ask you, someone asked me today to ask you, what mm. the um where you're taking this where where's what's the final goal that you're you're heading towards i mean presumably this isn't going to be your last your last thing as as well as roxanne with the with the globe lie tour and everything what was the end goal here what, with me personally both yep yeah, for me the the end goal has always been social acceptance for this subject and once we have social acceptance we're going to be able to start to evoke reform, um, hopefully in a civilised fashion. Um, and I think with what Anthony's doing by attacking the education system, we need to start, you know, eating away at this from every angle, just chipping away, chipping away. And as long as we consistently keep that chipping going, we're not going to drop the baton like has been done so by many previous generations before us. The baton's been dropped eventually. The perpetual motion of the the, you know, the publicisation of the conversation has just been, you know, the momentum of it hasn't, you know, like waves crashing on a beach. It's not been consistent. And I think with us, I think as a generation speaking, we've kind of looked around and gone, actually, no, what, you know what, we've got technology at our fingertips. We've got all of this, you know, we've got all of the things to hand now that we didn't have 100 years ago. And we're utilising it to the best of our ability. So I think we're, we're doing the best that we can with the tools that we've got to keep the conversation consistent, everlasting, you know, like it's not stopping. I think anyone that looks away from the internet for three or four weeks and looks back can clearly see the conversation still going. Um, and I think we've now got to the point where I, for one, have become very disillusioned with how the internet shadow banning, censoring things. Um, I don't know what the outreach is going to from what it's not. So for me, going onto the streets was, you know, from really quite early on, it was, you know, foregone conclusion that the conversation was going to pour out onto the streets, but not just on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you know, like setting up pitch and allowing people to come to us like we do when we're out, you know, in, in you know, numbers of five, six, seven, sometimes we've been out as much as 12, 15 of us. But once you've got a few banners and a few notifications, a few optics on the street, people soon slow down, read, and then want to have a conversation about it. And I think as long as we can do that, you tell one person they tell ten, those ten they tell another ten. Those that word of mouth is born, it's key. Word of mouth is everything. Um, and I think, you know, all it takes is for one person to go, did you see, you know, have you heard about that? And it's when, you know, people like to stereotype about the internet. And as soon as you say, oh, did you see that video on YouTube? Everyone writes it off. Oh, look, you're gonna tell me something from YouTube, are you? Go on then, what are you gonna tell me? Be honest for that. <laughs> conversation when you have a human to human conversation on the street resonates so much harder and, and having those meaningful conversations you know they're you know they're long sometimes you can be there you know anyone that's been out to speaker's corner will know that just one conversation can go on for an hour and a half oh, easy go through as many people as you can you're trying to have as many deep meaningful conversations as you can within reason while you're standing in a place full of a few hundred people that are shouting about religion and shouting about things that aren't actually, and I, I don't mean to speak broadly about that, but I mean, there are people having arguments over things that they can't prove. They're not out there making any claims. That's one thing I want to put forward. Okay. People are always going to, you know, have criticisms. And yeah, I think 
there's one thing I would say is if we could maybe work together to, to help people to unindoctrinate people, we do need some visual aids. We do need some visual aids to bring people out of thinking they're on a ball spinning through space. Like we need to we need to bring their heads out of thinking on that mindset. And you know, just the simple question of well, how would you circumnavigate if you're not on a ball? To try and visually represent that to someone without trying to use a visual aid is incredibly difficult. Yeah, sure. I just want to make a disclaimer to people that when one uses a visual aid to try and explain circumnavigation to people on a flat plane of existence, um, please don't try and pin that as pushing a model. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'd have to say that's not pushing a model. It's just trying to use some of the visual aid. But if anyone has got any um, suggestions for any visual aids that might be helpful, please put them on a self-addressed envelope and send them to Iron Realm Media. Well, what about well, having well, a competition to, um, to, you know, for people to submit their visual aids or whatever that will eventually get made into yeah. new banners for the tour or something? I don't know. Sorry, Adam. I, I was just going to say while you took talking, we've just had a super chat. Um, from second bowling this year. Thank Rene, you, Adam. I was trying to get back to it. Thank you. Right. Rene Kalutia or Kalutia. I love his bombarding children's websites with flat earth. And we've got lucky enough to have rocks on tonight. Right. I thought it was quite cool. And before the show, seeing the future, um, Roxanne's very blessed to have children that are clearly joining her on this journey um and but in, don't hide age, your own light adam uh, under the bush sir oh, you're doing quite a great job with your kids as well well that, oh, and maybe this is the difference that i was going to make but they're at a point where they're ready to engage on this of their own free will um mm -hmm. and and they're very lucky to have a great guide with them um and i think with regards to children it is a very interesting point um, that we raise uh, with regards to them. We we saw the bullshit with Jem Panda back in the summer, and he's trying to you know uh, associate with our children some way, having some strange interest in them. Very mm. odd, very very odd, and very worrying that he thought that is in some way uh, applicable. Um, most of my flat Earth. Uh, sorry, my non flat earth friends that I spoke to that about were very disturbed that there was somebody out there that, whilst they disagreed with me like they did, thought that that kind of behavior was in any way appropriate for anybody that isn't having their, uh, well, frankly, their, their liberty withheld. Um, so Children are a very sensitive subject, is what I'm probably getting at. Um, and, and like I say, Roxanne's at a stage where her children aren't really, one of them isn't a children, she's a young lady of her own mind. Um, and they're the real hope for me, the, these people, not our children. Our children are, uh, these trolls, like, like everything, give everything of real intelligence a lot less credit. Children don't have the bullshit in them they're quite able to see facts straightly clearly and truly and and i'm blessed as walt said that i've got two young boys that they're not interested in flat earth they're young boys for god's mm -hmm. sakes yeah mm -hmm. they're interested in Fortnite. they're not even interested in girls okay so do you know what i mean flat earth doesn't stand a chance yet um but they know it's flat and that's all that matters and when they do develop into young men, then hopefully I'll hand over to rocks because I don't know what's to come. <laughs> but you're at that stage, mate, and I don't want to sound all Michael Jackson, but we all know the children are the future. The truth. It is. It's the truth. It is. It's the truth. My kids are the main reason why I do what I do. Man, we're having trouble. Or I'm having trouble hearing you again, Roxanne. Darn it. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, a little better. I'm going to have to like pull the laptop. I don't know why my mic's not working. 
don't know what's going on with this app. I don't know. Yeah, I know. We we usually don't have any trouble with this app, so unusual. It's Friday in the round. It's high in round. Say no more. Robin, Robin, what about the same question to you about where the um, where do you see the goal, the end goal, the future? What, what, where does it take you? Okay, I guess I need to start with the, why did I take it on in the first place? Well, the first thing was that Gary declared that he he wasn't going to do it, and I thought, no way can I let that stop the momentum he created from last year. It'd be a crime to let it go. Thank God. And and. Uh, <laughs> I quickly jumped on it. I thought I can do this. I, I'm not known really in the in the community, but I need to make myself known pretty pretty damn sharpish. And um, yeah, I just got my skates on. Started to think about it. Um, I spoke to Charlotte in my in my local group in Bristol, and she said, "I'll help you." And then about half a dozen hands went up and said, "I'll help you too." And uh, from that point on, you know, Roxanne and I were starting to think about podcasts and things. And we were doing flat out um, activism through the summer. And I just thought, you know what? I've got the right relationships here now to actually kick on and to create something because at the time I probably didn't have all the right touch points to ask people to come and speak and what have you. But um, thanks to Roxanne and her amazing network and her networking skills, we managed to pull, pull our ideas and get, get things going. Um, where do I see it going now? I've got this far now. I've got a blueprint. I've got a schedule. I've got a ticketing platform. All of that sort of sorted now. I think where I see it going is building community and including everyone. And that's that's central for me because in that in that environment, people then go off and do their own thing. So John and Jim go off and do a laser experiment. Jenny and Jill go off and start a meetup. You know, um, Jess goes away and starts a youth group. <laughs> um, Ke- Kenny starts a dogs group with Ted. <laughs> Sorry, I'm joking. Private joke about our dogs. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, um, I think you 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 borrow people's confidence when you're at a big event. You, some I remember how I felt before I went. It's like I'm not sure if I want to. If I'm confident enough to start a meetup. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm not sure if I how I feel when I go to the conference, but when I came away, I thought, do you know what? This meetup's going to be really good now. I'm looking forward to it. And what you do is you borrow confidence from all of that energy in the room and you come away with sort of, you come away with a flame lit. So I think my vision for the thing is to create the biggest flipping snowball I possibly can by September with as much marketing as I can possibly muster and generate the sort of energy that speakers feel on, you know, flying speakers feel fantastic speaking. Guests feel awesome when they come and go away. And I want it to be the sort of thing that's a springboard for everyone else's, you know, next steps in their journey. I want them to gain confidence. I want them to feel included. I want them to just feel energized by the whole thing and you know if i can do that and grow it then and, and it goes well then who knows i might do a, i might do a 2020 as well well um, that's a great answer and it's a great aspiration so i wish you all the luck can it can you just tell me when it is september yeah so september the 13th is a friday saturday the 14th and sunday the 15th it's at the pioneer center in it's very close to kidderminster but if you just go Google Maps and search the Pioneer Centre, um, tickets are on sale now. So you can either book the Saturday or the Sunday individually, or you can book the whole weekend. I'm actually thinking about doing something just for the Friday night. If those those that are just connected to the Globe Eye activism want to have a drink and then go home. Nice. I'm thinking and about... We'll definitely put all the links and info there in the description for you, Robin. So just Thank you very much. Yeah, so feconvention.com. It's it's a com it's a it's a collaboration between Dee Dee, Gary and myself and Charlotte and Roxanne. And what we've done is Rox, what Dee Dee has done very graciously is allowed us to have um, our own page and ticketing elements and speaker stuff um, on that website. And you know, today I was able to announce that Martin Leake is going to be speaking. I'm so thrilled! <laughs> what an absolute diamond awesome. this guy is. Martin is just 
when Martin spoke in April, Adam, wasn't he wasn't he brilliant? I, I wish he had more time. And um, I'm going to give him a full platform, two hours, let him flow, let him do his thing. And he's going to do, yeah. I think that would be at least a minimum. <laughs> yeah. Martin needs an hour to warm up, mate. <laughs> yeah. But he gets, uh, you know, my, my wife came to the April one and she's very much a sort of not sure sort of person, just just humouring me and, and able to determine that, that, you know, moon landings are fake and so on. She, she's not willing to go all in, but she was there and she really warmed to Martin because his sense of humour is lovely and, you know, he just charms everyone. So that's not great, that, mate. He speaks, he speaks from the heart. He doesn't speak yeah. from a script. He speaks honestly. Correct, yeah. and no matter who you are but what the subject is if you're a human being somebody speaking to you honestly and truthfully resonates with you mm-hmm. and martin's a great speaker like that because he also if you know if, even if you go back and look at the the youtube vids just the vids but if you were in that room he engages with you 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 feel engaged with him and he is he's a he's a top bloke he's my mate and um yeah. He was one of the first people I met um, and chatted mm. with. I got on one of his first live streams back in the day when Bob was doing the first balloon launch. And, Brilliant. And so he's always, you know, we don't, it's a funny world, Flat Earth. We don't, me and Martin, like, interact, uh, probably a bit like Nathan does with him. We're aware of each other and we know mm. we can call on each other, but we've all got our own routes and our paths mm. to go. and um. That's the beautiful thing. There's no contracts, but they don't need to be. You know, there's there's trust and absolutely with all of us that you know when you meet people and when you meet when we met Mar when I met Martin, I'll, I've said it before and I'll say it again. We just looked at each other and there was just the hugest hug and quite a tight squeeze. There. <laughs> uh, and, and that's the beauty of this thing, you know. But what's what's I must I must connect Roxanne into this now. But what's amazing about this convention is it's just a massive snowball. It, it's the it's one of the one of the the stepping stones in the tour, and so I'm sure we'll gather those that are just purely interested in activism, but want to connect with those activists. Maybe just do the Friday night. That's absolutely fine. Come along, you know, just be part of the snowball that is going to going to grow. I can't wait. Robbie, one, 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 when was the um, open mic? Because that, that for me, I, I did my open mic last year, mm. so I don't have to do one. And it wasn't somewhere I planned. Um, yeah. So it was a beautiful thing. And to, to give that opportunity again, and if there's anybody out there, guys, take the time to think, even if you don't finally pluck up the courage to go up there, take the time to think about it because it is a, yeah. a great experience. And, through that, I met a lot of people, not to do with Flat Earth, but what I rambled on about with regards to health and stuff. Mm. Um, and it's good. It's a good stuff. And thanks for continuing the opportunity. Yeah, no worries. So so the Friday night would do the review of all that, all things activism. I want to include a musician and um, I need to confirm properly. We, we've had a, an informal yes uh, confirmation. Um, then there'll be some food, but... There's no reason why we can't do an open mic for an hour and then all shoot off to the pub after on the Friday night. And then I've got um, a potential slot on, on Sunday afternoon, last thing, to do it then as well. Um, You'll get a lot more people on the open mic if you actually do it down the pub, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, well, um, I'm, I've had to do another recce today because I want to see where we can have the social, but I found the pub. It is big friendly welcoming nice outdoor um seating as well so um, i think it sounds fantastic i think you put a lot of effort and thought into this and i also like the fact that you're boxing clever with dd and gary as well being pooling resources um i think that's what a lot of this lacks is the organization and and the pooling of the resources, you know, everyone sort of seems to be setting up their own websites and going their own sort of way, which is fine too. But doesn't it help so much when you, you've got a platform mm. already built and it already has people bookmarked it and all the rest of it? Yeah, Didi's, Didi's awesome. She's she's really competent at all things 
social media and and web design she's given me a magic email address i can email a new blog post to and it just pops up there on feconvention.com i mean super super slick um we and- know how slick and awesome dd is um whilst <laughs> we're talking all the website stuff let's because um let's can you do a round out and maybe give some of the websites and the the contact mm-hmm. addresses the facebooks etc and where people okay. can find it and extra details in that okay so the main website is feconvention.com and you'll see a link for amsterdam and a link for kidderminster then we've got the facebook page which is a joint one called fe convention and we've got two facebook groups as fe convention amsterdam and globe line convention 2019 join the second one of those globe line convention 2019 and you'll get all the all the chatter amongst the community and all the updates and then just stay tuned to mine and roxanne's channel and we'll be publishing various promos i'm basically getting all my speakers to do me a little intro and i'll release those once every fortnight so we had martin today and we'll we'll publish those on all of those platforms speaking of um chatter and and back chat how is how is how have you been um accepted by flat earth how have you been taken i mean obviously you're going to get your <clears throat> cynical miserable bastards out there who claim to be flat earthers who just mock and and um denigrate everyone that does actually get off their ass and do something about this but in general how's how's the reception been i've been really i've been really delighted with it really John, because, you know, first of all, the Bristol meetup, there's so many lovely people in Bristol. We're, they are such an awesome group. They look after each other, look out for each other. Um, and then connecting with, with Roxanne, Harry, Jason and the activists has been another delight, you know. Um, I've, been, I've just really enjoyed it. I mean, I, my background's sales, so I've got a really thick skin. I might come across as this sort of, genteel sort of guy quite you know <laughs> wouldn't say be to a goose but i've got a really thick skin you know oh, i can I've tell been, i've been in sales for six years <laughs> it's wall off a duck's back when everyone says about me i don't, I don't give two hoots so I, get, <laughs> I get trolled and i and i give it large when i want to and, and i'm just ignoring when i can't be asked good man good man quite simple really what about you roxanne what about me thick skin no how are you how are the reception from other flat earthers. Mm. Well, John, John, can we can we come on to that subject before we get on to? I don't know, Josh. Have we got the other guests lined up, or where where are we at? Because there is a topic that might take a while, but I don't know what the score is. We have some time. Okay. Well, I'm in communications with Brendan right now, sort of as we speak. Uh, so he just got home from work a little bit ago. He should be along just. You know, in two shakes of a nice. jackrabbit's ass. Nice. Well, yeah, let, me, let, let me poke the bear then. Um, we were chatting before, and and it, it was something we'd alluded to when I think those guys first, or when I first met with you, Rox, in, in, in Nottingham. And um, mm-hmm. shortly after that, we had this announcement from a YouTube channel. Yeah. Saying, oh, a new shield channel. Um, and that was quite novel to me as a I'm quite internet naive and all goes off and the likes, but that, that was quite interesting, um, more than anything. And you, you can sign it to history as it disappears to the insignificance of the actions of petty little people. Um, but there's been another one this week which I think is quite a little bit more significant. Um, because it comes from Mr. Savage, and it and it comes from a source that's been engaged with these guys on Twitter for a while, um, and it's the language that was used once again to describe you two guys, and particularly certainly what's going off, um, or not necessarily you as individuals, but what you're generating. Um, and and I can think of no bigger compliment because that's what they're attacking, um, okay. and that's what they're scared of. So, John, take over, pal. Uh, right, okay. Um, 
didn't really want to go full public with it, but it's on Twitter anyway, so anyone can go and watch it. But you, don't yeah, have to I, I, it, you can keep handles out of it if you want. I will. I can't remember his name anyway. So it's um, I I, I retweeted your fantastic interview with Dr. John D. Oh. And um, what what flat earther wouldn't be interested in a PhD doing actual um experiments mm -hmm. that are proving the earth is flat so and, oh, I was, hold up i'm not having that i'm not on here um they're not experiments they're fantastic of the most zetetic quality out there this is another show we said before that we really need to get back onto um zetetic uh observations but yeah um, it is the most awesome but it's not an experiment sorry yeah. You're done. Yeah. Not likely. Just wait. We had experiments. There was something else, wasn't there? Proof. Are we sure it's proof? So tonight, <laughs> look. This this stuff's amazing. It's going to support us all amazingly, guys. Mm -hmm. But what we've got to be careful of, what we've got to be careful of, is not dealing in the bullshit that they deal in right now. We know better. Okay, we know better. Whatever we produce, let's make sure it's produced not just for today, but for tomorrow, for the future, so that future criticism is already mitigated for, guys. We, we, we've been on a journey, and we're all at different stages, and we have to learn from each other, protect each other, yeah? Yep. Not attack mm -hmm. each other, but to, tech, to protect each other. And well, I've been in chats. <clears throat> I, you talk about unplanned shit. This is unplanned. I've been in chats with Nathan and, and lots of other people, and John's stuff is the dog's bollocks, right? It's brilliant. If we label it as science, it opens us up to future criticism and invalidation and having to start again to validate what he's producing for us all. And what he's producing for us all, if we label it right, is undeniable. We label it wrong yeah we open ourselves up to to just having this bullshit that we see now where they're able to deny it yeah and let's you were right josh you started it but i'm glad I'm no i didn't it. say scientific experiment i don't no, care no. if anyone hears the word experiment and they want to imply themselves that the science going into it i just simply said experiment but um incorrectly you're done I'm done now. I'm going to mute. And I'm. Well, I was. I was quite surprised that to get kickback from a long-term follower, um, someone I interact with, you know, since 2015 at least. I know Rob in Australia has been um, a follower and following for since 2013 or whatever. 95% uh, of this guy's timeline, I would say, I agree with 100%. Um, but yeah, you, you've wound some people up for some reason, um, and um, I don't know where did you want to take that, Robin? Uh, sorry, uh, Adam or Robin yeah. <laughs> or Roxanne. Well, what I was going to say was, when you think about how to how to sell to a group of people, you've got the out of ten, you've got two or three that go, "I'm in" in the first ten, you know, first ten minutes. The next two will go. Come on, convince me. The next two or three, you're really going to have to start twisting their arm and showing them a massive business case, but they might go in. Then you've got two that are going, oh, I really don't get this. I don't know what it's all about. I'm not going to go in. And then the last two people will be hard-headed and on your bike and get vociferous with you. I don't see any point in wasting time with those last two. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And, and so, so if we're going to do a scientific experiment with and John D, and we're going to witness it. Leave those last two to get on with it. Those are just the numbers. Let's not wrestle with that. That's just the way it goes. Let's aim for the top two, the top four, the top six. Those that are going to say yes, let's go for those. Um, and that's that's the way I see it because there's so many easier easier people to convert into into flat earth. We might as well go where there's where there's easy pickings. You know, low dangling fruit. Isn't it funny how the criticizers? Yeah are always the ones that have never done anything. 
and will never yeah. do anything either. Yeah. It's not worth spending any time on, personally. I agree. We'll wrap it up because we are getting joy, but the, you said where yeah. do you want to take it? And I, I, there is one place I want to take it, and this is probably a bit more geeky than is necessary. But um, <laughs> if you look at where John's come from uh, on Twitter and the people he's engaging with, very, very interesting, Roxanne. I don't know that they're, they, uh, uh, John, can you give the phrase you're not joining in with what was the, what was the prejudicial group they tried to liken Roxanne and these guys to? Because it's, yeah, please. Yeah, it's, totally. it's unbelievable for me because not only can I not see the link, but to actually make that link is for me much more telling than anything. Well, it was quite bizarre. Um, they've obviously been watching um, UK Column, but they described you as, as um, common purpose. Sorry? Common purpose. What, what, and, and that's implying what exactly? Okay. Well, you'd have to ask. Uh, <laughs> common, common purpose is, if you look at all the way in which the education systems and the quasi- control systems that are put in place are taught and given their script to read from it's pretty much called this 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 common cause common purpose uh, agenda um to, to put it simply I, I won't go into much more detail than that but it is very telling roxanne that suddenly as the most deflammatory comment that you could create which is the most juxtaposed to your position yeah. Uh, it is the they're basically putting you in with the Illuminati control elite that actually derive the construct that we're we're, we're supposed wow. to live in this paradigm. That's what common purpose, common core teaching is all about. And and I just thought not only did I piss my sides, but I thought you no, know, we talk about the desperation they're going to. Oh, bear bear in mind though that it is one person and they're unsubstantiated unsupported opinion and gossip um exactly my dad always said you cannot you can only please some of the people some of the time not all of the people all of the time so i never try to please everybody yeah and um, as a, sorry i was just going to say john respect respectfully to you if it was somebody that was just popping up in chat you'd never heard of making that statement you could forbid it for what you said oh they've obviously just turned into uk oh, column channel and learned a little bit this is somebody i'd have ignored that, it yeah but this is somebody that you've engaged with intellectually over a period of time and also rob has i don't yeah, know rob, can rob in, been, engage intellectually i've know. been dying for him to block me because he's one of these antsy little shits that just you see, you see him on your timeline, and your heart sinks. You think, "What the fuck's he going to mince on about now?" Uh, you know, who doesn't he like, or who, who's rubbed him up the wrong way, and now you have to disassociate yourself with everyone. Uh, it, he's just one of these people, and um, so uh, normally I do ignore him, or I pussyfoot around him, and and um, pander to whatever grimace he's got but today he picked the wrong day it's probably the full moon but i just called him out on it i was like let me see your evidence give me your evidence yeah. show me anything you've got just show me anything that's that yeah. will give me an inkling as to where you're coming from and yeah. why you're making claims about people online um you know you must have something and obviously he had nothing and squirmed and ended up blocking me so of character without any evidence it's just public slander and defamation of character without any evidence it's just pure pathetic as far as i'm concerned so i reciprocated the block and i'm i'm glad for it because this particular thorn in my side can piss off now sorry Ross. i suppose talking about the things that we're talking about and doing what we're doing in public is part of the course somewhat Say again, you've got a bit quiet. So, yeah, I'm saying with what everybody's talking about in public, I think it's par for the course that people are going to not be happy or not like people. I think it's just... You know, like Robin said, a very, very small, you know, toenail shaving in the corner is going to be 
unhappy about it and determined to try and um, divide and conquer is, is all I can say. And I'll tell you what, yeah, John. It, there John, we go. I've had, I've had shit today, right? And I'm not going to get into it now, but if we got time later, it'd fringe. Everybody's aggravated right now. I don't know what's going off. I've pre-show. I'm talking to me, mate. about how I've kicked up with with doctors. I've even rang the NHS today, mate, with with shit because I've had enough. Right? I've got. I, I've potted it. I don't know what the moon's doing. I don't know what's going <laughs> off. But everybody's fucking moaning and everybody's losing it. But with that, before Brendan loses it and goes. You've ignored me for 15 minutes, you fuckers. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Brendan, evening, bro. What's up? Hey, What's Brendan. Up? Welcome back, hey, man. man. <sighs> that, Thanks for having me, guys. That's called a link, boys. That's called a link. <laughs> yeah, but you ask him a question, though. No, oh, okay. <laughs> what have I walked into? What type of madness is going on here? Oh, in the it's it's Friday, Friday, my dude. Hey. Right. Friday. Friday, full moon. <laughs> hey, sorry for the mishap, by the way. Um, Look, Here's what it is. You know, we've got so many different time zones here just in Iron Realm that it's hard for me to keep track. We've got a show on Tuesday mornings on Truth Frequency Radio and on Friday mornings on Truth Frequency Radio. Now we've got this show also on Friday afternoons. It's really hard for me to sometimes keep track of dates and times. So we've not even gone over why you're here alone just yet. But look, it's no hard feelings because look, I get dates Josh, mixed up all Josh, the time. Could, could I intercede? I right, to be the mud flooder in the back of the pub again. But no, you didn't. during the past couple of resets, our slave master decreed a time called GMT. We all stick to that, figure out where we are based upon it. Easy. And then those that are telling the information don't have to time travel because we've tried this for years, mate. Just stick to what our slave masters taught us. Go with GMT. Right, Adam. And here in the States, we should all be using the metric and all kind of fantasy worlds would be great, but <laughs> we'll see how that works out. 